CataractCoach.com. Aspheric eye wells. Do you actually understand them? Let me give you a basic primer and the background about why we're using aspheric eye wells in cataract surgery and what the differences are. Do you want to do a negative aspheric lens, a positive spheric elaboration lens, a zero spheric elaboration lens? Why would you choose one over the other? What's the difference? How does the eye change with age? What's the best for the patient? Check this out. This is an old lecture I first gave in 2006. I found the PowerPoint slides and I recorded a nice voiceover so you can understand this very important topic. Check it out. This is a presentation about aspheric eye wells that I first gave in 2006, so 17 years ago. Now, what does aspheric mean? There are a lot of mathematical ways of explaining this, but let's boil things down a little bit. Bottom line is in the spherical lens, the peripheral light rays are defocused. Whereas in this aspheric lens, all the light rays are focused at the same point. So a simplified way of thinking about it, like is this M.C. Escher drawing showing extreme positive spheric elaboration, in other words, your reflection in a sphere, or on the right side of the screen, that negative crater, if you projected an image in there, that would be like a negative spheric elaboration. So how does it affect the image? Now this diagram is from a camera manufacturer showing the difference between spherical and aspheric. And you can see when placed on this tablecloth, the distortion that's evident. So if you see this video, this is increasing positive spheric elaboration, and now going back towards zero, and then here's negative spherical elaboration. So this is an easy way of thinking about it without so many mathematical terms. So where do we use aspheric lenses? We're already using them in any professional camera. We're using them in your clinic, in your operating room every day. Contact lenses and glasses often have aspheric lenses. And of course these, these lenses we're using every day in our clinics to examine the patients are aspheric lenses. So why not make an aspheric eye well? Well, it's a little bit harder to make, but you can get better optics if you do the green version here on the bottom, the aspheric. You see how the curvature is variable, but the power is constant. The top of the screen here in red, the curvature is the same, but the power is variable. Now you can look at the picture and say, hey, there's spherical, there's aspheric, now I get it. So what are the current lenses on the market? There are some positive spherical aberration IOLs, which are most of the older style conventional lenses. Those were popular in the mid 2000s. Now they're negative spherical aberration IOLs, and zero spherical aberration eye wells where the surface of the eye well is modified. And today, I'd say the vast majority of lenses in 2023 that we use are aspheric of one design or the other, mostly negative spherical aberration, but some of them are also zero spherical aberration. So that's the classification. So traditional lenses from old, long ago, those have positive spherical aberration, and the aspheric eye wells can either have zero or some degree of negative spherical aberration. Let's talk about some ocular aberrations. Now you may hear about the Q value describing the spherical aberration. It's pretty simple. Look at the diagram here. In the green box is an aspheric lens that's prolate, then there's spherical in the middle, and the bottom is aspheric that's oblate. And if we make the little lens here, now you can see there are the shapes. So spherical is in the middle, aspheric prolate is what we want, but there's also aspheric oblate. So let's focus on the prolate. So a normal cornea actually has a mild amount of positive spherical aberration. If you look at the study published by Wong many 20 years ago, these are all young, healthy LASIK patients. And all the um, aberrations, the Zernike terms, were measured in advance. And notice that the only one with a non-zero mean is spherical aberration. That means young, healthy corneas have some degree of Spherical aberration, positive spherical aberration. You can see here an average term is about 0 0.25, 27, somewhere in there. Fritz Zernike won the Nobel Prize for describing all these polynomials. So if you're not familiar with this diagram, the very top here is just the bias or tilt of an image. These are the things we con are concerned with with refraction. The center one there is the spherical power and the two sides are astigmatism. And those are the lower order aberrations that we're so concentrated on, right? Focusing on the spherical and cylindrical components of the outcome. But in here, these are all the higher order aberrations. And right there in the center, the Z40 term is spherical aberration. So that's the spherical aberrations we're talking about. 
If you look at this chart, you can see that spherical aberration has this degree of distortion for the image. Well, how does the eye change with age? If you look here, normal corneas stay about the same throughout life. A little bit of positive spherical aberration as we talked about. The lens changes throughout life, and then something else happens towards the end there, and therefore the overall eye has the same kind of drift. What happens there? That was pseudophaky with a standard lens, and you can see how it increases spherical aberration. Well, we don't really want that. So an ideal eye in youth, the cornea has a little positive spherical aberration, the normal human crystal lens has a little negative spherical aberration. As a result, the overall eye has no spherical aberration. And since you're young, 20 years old, you've got great accommodation. Well, you hit about 45 or 50 years old, the cornea is the same, now your age clear lens has a little bit less spherical aberration. It doesn't have the negative anymore, now it's closer to zero. So now the overall image and the eye is a mild degree of positive spherical aberration, and that may actually help by increasing depth of field as accommodation decreases due to presbyopia. A cataract eye has even more positive spherical aberration as the cataract develops. So the overall eye has a lot of spherical aberration. And again, the older style standard lens, which we don't really use much in 2023, would increase that more. If we put in a negative spherical aberration eye well, that's going to end up go returning us back to zero spherical aberration for the eye as a whole. But importantly, that has to mean, uh, maintain a good centration. We'll talk about that. A zero spherical aberration lens is going to return you to about age 45 or 50, where there's a good image quality and a slightly increased depth of field. Now, what's the depth of field here? Look at the top here. A traditional lens, most depth of field, but worst image quality. A zero spherical aberration lens in the eye, good depth of field, good image quality. A negative spherical aberration eye, well, less depth of field, but the best image quality. So here's a graph kind of depicting that. And if we look at this convolved E diagram, you can see the worst image quality at the focal point is going to be the traditional lens. A little bit better with the zero spherical aberration and significantly better with the negative spherical aberration but the depth of field or depth of focus is going to be a little bit changed. You can see here the negative spherical aberration lens has the best E, the sharpest image at the zero point, but has the shallowest depth of focus or depth of field. Now we can look, there's also a difference in mesopic versus scotopic versus photopic. And so you can see here with a negative spherical aberration lens compared to zero, there's a little difference in the range. And you can see here scotopic as well, a little bit difference in the range. So when should you use these lenses? A positive spherical aberration design, almost never, except maybe in some post-hyperopic LASIK patients where the cornea now has a lot of negative spherical aberration. Negative spherical aberration design lenses, best image quality, a less, little less depth of field. If you have good centration of the eye with visual axis, this is a fantastic choice. And that's what most of our lenses are today. We also do have some aberration-free or zero spherical aberration eye wells, which give good image quality, good depth of field, but centration is not as critical. So let's look at this example here. So you can see on the right in the pink, that's positive spherical aberration where the lens power increases from the center to the edge. The zero spherical aberration, or sometimes called aberration-free, though that's not a great term, the power is uniform from center to the edge. And negative spherical aberration, the power slightly decreases from the center of the edge. And that's more pronounced in higher power IOLs. So if you have a 28 diopter lens, the difference there are a little bit more in terms of strict differences in diopter power. Now, what is image quality? This is a normal contrast sensitivity, and this is where we decrease it by about 25%. And you can see there's certainly an effect. So you can get about a 25% reduction in the contrast sensitivity with a spherical lens, again, which we don't use too much in 2023, versus an aspheric lens. Now, what does the patient see? Neat way of looking at it is using these Air Force Vision test targets. Let me show you that. That's where you put the IOL inside the camera and take the photograph through the IOL. So here's a good example. Same manufacturer, same material, same line of lenses. The aspheric lens on the left, that's the green one. Great image quality, better contrast. On the right, not quite as good on the contrast or image quality. Here's another one from another manufacturer showing that from their same line of lenses, the negative spherical aberration lens here, the aspheric lens, give a much better image quality. Now, what's the effect of pupil size? 
Well, think about it. The small pupils are going to block those peripheral rays. So if you look at this same tablecloth that I showed you at the beginning of this presentation, a small pupil, look, they look about the same. With large pupils, the images are more different. So the best conditions of a small pupil and bright sunlight, the aspheric lens is maybe slightly better than an older style lens. But in a larger pupil, dimmer light, less ideal conditions, the aspheric lens is going to be significantly better than a regular IOL. Now, what's the effect of lens dense decentration? The effect of IOL decentration, well, with a decent lens, the aspheric IOL performs better than a spherical one. And let me show you this. Here's a positive spherical calibration IOL. And if you see, if we decenter it, let me explain the graph to you. On the left side here, the yellow line is the cornea, which has a variable power, right? Then there's the positive spherical calibration lens, again, variable power. So the total eye has this variable power. If you decenter the green, which is the IOL, it still looks okay with still positive spherical calibration. With a zero spherical calibration lens, even if you decenter it, you again have about the same degree of spherical collaboration. But the catch is with a negative spherical collaboration lens. Let me explain. So here's a zero spherical collaboration lens. You can see as it decenters, because the power of the lens is the same from the center to the edge, there's essentially minimal effect on image quality. Now, negative spherical collaboration lens, that's that lens in red there. As we decenter it, look at the power of the lens is different center to edge. So see, on the left side, it bounces the cornea beautifully, and the total eye has zero spherical collaboration. But on the right image, we can see that the total eye now, with a decentered negative spherical collaboration lens, induces what's called coma. So again, top image here, negative spherical lens, perfectly centered, beautiful image quality. As, but as we decenter it, it induces this coma aberration, which lowers image quality. So here you can see the two lenses. If you have decentration, a zero spherical collaboration lens is going to perform better than a negative spherical collaboration lens. So which lens do you use and when? Well, the positive spherical collaboration lenses, again, rarely, just maybe some post-hyperopic LASIK patients. The negative spherical collaboration design lens, best image quality, less depth of field. If you get good, good centration, this is a fantastic choice. And the aberration-free or zero spherical calibration design lenses, good image quality, good depth of field, centration not as critical. So if you have your prospective cataract patient and they had prior hyperopic LASIK where the cornea now has negative spherical calibration, well, placing this traditional lens with positive spherical calibration will balance that out. So that's about the only time I use these older style lenses with positive spherical calibration. Now, prior myopic LASIK, those eyes have even more need for a negative spherical collaboration IOL because the cornea has positive spherical collaboration IOL. Now, it should be said that today, in modern day, if your LASIK was done in the last 10 years or PRK, we have new guidance for our lasers that produces a prolate shape in the cornea so they don't induce all that spherical collaboration that the old lasers from 20 years ago did. Now, your patient had no prior coronal refractive surgery. That's most of our patients. If you have a likelihood of IOL decentration, then maybe an aspheric IOL with zero spheric collaboration would be a great choice. If there's really not likely uh, that the IOL is going to decenter and you want the best image quality, that's where you want to put in an aspheric IOL with negative spheric collaboration. And if you want a little more depth of field, and that's more critical than absolute image quality, then place the zero spheric collaboration IOL. So that's my summary of aspheric lenses, and I hope this was very useful and educational for you. And remember, also check out our website, cataractcoach.com, and more than just the YouTube videos. Thank you for watching.